Um, so this morning, the topic is using Cafe Logic Studio, using some of the line drawing and smoothing tools, um, and generally um, the tools around manipulating points on a profile curve. Uh, before I start, I'll just check out um, whether we've got any questions that might have been arising from our last session that we need to deal with before we kick off. Is anyone out there with a, a, a burning question? No. All good. Okay, well, um, let's, uh, let's get started. Uh, which one to do? I need to share my screen. And I just really want to share this window with you. So there's what I've got here on the screen is the absolute basic window you get when you open up um, Cafe Logic Studio and you're in a position where you can start building a or editing a profile curve. Now, what most people would do um, in editing a profile curve is you would always be looking for some um, curve to start as a base. However, if you want to start with a completely blank screen, then this is the next best thing you get to a blank screen. This is the default profile curve. And what we could actually do if we want to start with a completely blank screen is I could use my delete key um, but I can't delete the first point so if I select the second point and delete and delete and delete and delete and delete I end up oh I end up with a wee error because I went too far um, this is not really going to be our normal way of um, proceeding but I've now got myself into a little tangle because <laughs> I've got too few roast points, haven't I? Um, we'll just get force our way out of Cafe Logic Studio and restart. Um, so I can't even do that. Problem when this happens. Um, in the Apple window, I can do a full squat. Okay, well, there's a wee bug that I um, uh, believe had been completely resolved. and fully tested, um, but it's come up in use there. Now, if you do ever uh, encounter that, um, when you're using Cafe Logic Studio, get in touch with me straight away. So now that I'm aware that there's a bug there, um, I will be working to have a, a fix to that out very soon. We've got another beta going out very soon. It's not... Uh, uh, a very big deal because it's not a very common uh, approach for people to take. Um, but what we can do is we can take it in a more moderate way and just delete, but still leave ourselves a few points. Right, so now if I've decided that I'm going to start from scratch, I might want to just enter numbers. And what I can do is, so let us say that I want my first point to be reaching 100 degrees at one minute. So all I have to do is type in down the bottom now, can everybody see the bottom part of the screen where I'm typing in one for one minute? And I hit the tab key and I'm going to delete all of that and put in zero. So we're at exactly one minute and you'll see that that point has actually moved up 
um, have moved uh, across to the one minute line. And now if we wanted one minute to be 100 degrees, I can also change that to be 100. Hit return. So I've now got my one minute mark at 100 degrees. Um, then if I knew that I wanted to reach 150 at the three minute mark, I click on the next point and I put in my time at three and my temperature at 150. So I can just type these things in. Now, for my next point, I might need to insert a point. So I can insert a new point. And my next point, I might want that to be at seven minutes. I want to be at 200 degrees. So I type in seven minutes. Chris, how are you choosing these times and temperatures? Uh, these ones I'm just making up out of my head. Um, I'm assuming this process um, that you would you would start out with a scheme as to where you want to go. Um, so what I'm really showing you here is the process that you would go through if you had written down on a piece of paper already, these are my time temperature targets that I want to hit. I know that I want to build a profile to hit these targets. And this is the process you would go through. It's probably not your normal starting process, but I'm just using it as a bit of a demonstration as to how to use the, the software. Normal starting process would be to start with an existing profile and make changes. Um, so you can see what I've done by typing in three points as type in time temperature points, my line is not very smooth. It's got these dips in it. And the rate of rise has got huge ups and downs in it because of them. Very simple thing I can do in the draw menu is there's a smooth all option. Smooth all runs a smoothing algorithm across all the points and gives me a much better curve. Um, so usually that would be the process if you're typing in points. You type in a number of points and then you just run smooth all on them. However, what can happen is you might look at point back here and say, well, the automatic smoothing gave me that, but I really want something that looks a bit more like that to start off with. And I might adjust this point by using some of these yellow handles. And this has given me a bit more of a customized curve. If I now go smooth all, it will actually put it back to that smooth curve. So if I've gone something which is beyond the automatic smoothing, then I can no longer use automatic smoothing on all points, but I can still use smoothing on a single point. So if I added in a new point, let's insert a point up here. Um, I can smooth just that point. And I can come back to this point here and smooth just that point in order to get a smoothing going on without applying smoothing back here where I don't want it. Does that make any sense? So generally the process for adding points is you add the new point, put it where you want it, then you use smooth point. Um, or if you're adding a whole bunch of points, you might want to use smooth all. Any questions about that process at this stage? Okay. Um, 
So what I thought I would do now is actually take you through an example of importing the profile from, um, actually this is a profile from a commercial roaster. So in the file menu, I can choose import and I'm going to choose crops because I've got a crops the profile. Now this is something that obviously only a professional roaster will have crops the profiles like lying around. Um, but it's just a, uh, an example of how we can work with a profile that's come from some other source. Let's import it. Not bother saving it, right? Now, when I import, um, because I'm importing from an external system, there are logs, color change, and first track. I can bring them in as well. So what have we got here now? We've got a profile, the gray line is the curve from the external source. And the blue line is the automatic curve fit that our software has done for us. The vertical yellow line is expected color change and the vertical orange line is expected first track. They all came in as part of the import. Now you can see the blue line is not lining up with the gray line as well as you might like, and especially in this area, very crucial area up here, it's doing rather odd things. We've got a bit of an S bend going there around um, in the development phase, which we wouldn't like. So we're going to experiment with smooth oil and lo and behold, smooth oil gives us a much better fit. So already we've got a benefit from doing that. We can even improve the situation down here a little bit more by doing some hand tweaking. So I'm grabbing that yellow handle from the very first point and I'm going to move it usually this kind of steeper start is, is going to be better. And secondly, I can do a little bit of very small tweaking in here to actually get the curve to fit uh, even better for the grey line. Now we've got almost perfect fit of the profile to the log. So we're um, importing a log from another roaster and fitting a profile for it, and we've been able to do a perfect job of fitting. Now, actually, if we're getting a profile from another roaster, which we didn't want to run on the Cafe Logic, we do have to think about other aspects um, of the conversion such as the temperature conversion envelope and maybe some transformation of time. I'm not going to cover those today. I've just really covered by using the tools for smoothing the curve. Um, so it's uh, largely speaking a, a, a curve editing system. Um, what some of the sort of changes that you might oh, I've got that waiting room sitting out there somewhere and it's not showing on my screen for me so I admit the I'm wondering now whether that's a problem um, <laughs> I don't have any indication that we're... I'm just hearing the... Just bear with me a moment. I might just stop sharing. See if I can... Mm. Oh, here we go. We've got shares. That's it. Right, I shall be turning that feature off when I get the chance. 
Oh, next thing's going to happen is my laptop battery's going to go flat. What a session we're having. It's a Monday. <laughs> Isn't it? Um, now, let's uh, have another quick look at how we might work with this is a, a log from a profile of a roast that was run just recently. Now we just have a bouncing beach ball, lovely. Okay, we're definitely having um, issues here, aren't we? My laptop, here we go. So, what can we say? Um, we've got a log and we need the standard access so we can't make any sense of it and it doesn't look too bad but it's a bit rough around the zone from here and actually some of the settings in this profile weren't that great and that's why it's performing badly uh, again that's a topic for another day all i'm really interested at the moment is i want to grab that profile and edit it so I go to extract profile from log and it'll give me the opportunity to take the logs. The logs and expected first crack were really close. I might keep the expected the way it was and extract. And it's going to be weird again. So now I can work on my profile and there are various changes I might want to do but let's say for example that I wanted to go a little bit steeper through here. So I click on there and I've got the option I can drag that point up. My laptop's not happy, is it? Oh, laptop, very unhappy. You can drag the point up like that. Or alternatively, if I know where I'm going, I can type in the numbers down the bottom. undone that and I can see that at 2 minutes 41 I'm at 162 but I might know that I want to be at 172 so I just put in a 7 there and it will pop it up. Now having done that I'm looking at the rest of my curve and I'm thinking mm, I've now got not very nice smooth curves here so I'm going to try Smooth all, see what that does. And actually that's given me quite a nice curve through here, but I still might want a wee steep start at the front. So I'm probably going to pull that yellow point on that first one up. Oh, very slow. This is uh, restart your laptop time, isn't it? Ah, there it's moved. So that's nicer. It's going through. And I've got a little bit of a dip in here, which I could potentially get rid of. Again, just a small amount of movement on that point. Except that the laptops playing up real slow. Yeah. And then I might just want to try smoothing that point.
Okay. So that's basically what I wanted to cover about using um, that editing system. Um, any questions at this stage? I'm guessing you would want to do something else with it to get the green line to be a bit smoother, is that correct? Um, I'm not going to get too hung up on getting the green line smooth, it would be nice. Um, the green line is the rate of rise and obviously there are these little um, scoops up in here and I could spend a bit of time moving those yellow points around to smooth out those green points. And I would be inclined to do that if I if I was really happy with the overall profile. So if I'd been roasting with it and it was going well, I might put that work in. But in reality, when I look at the the log of a roast run on this profile, there'll be ups and downs going through here anyway. Um, so it isn't necessarily going to make much. Now that we've we've got it to that point where we've got more or less a falling rate of rise going through that part of the curve. Um, we could reduce the size of those hillocks um, and maybe get a little bit of a better, it does help the roast control system, the smoother you get everything, the easier it is for it to follow the curve. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily bother about hum, hummocks of that size at this stage. Okay, um, I'm just going to have to run away and grab a uh, power supply or my laptop is just going to cut out. So just talk among yourself. Got that problem sorted. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about today was the difference between expected and um, actual first crack and expected and actual colour change. So you can see the profile that I've got here has got an expected first crack at 209. Now the expected first crack when you are editing a profile appears as a vertical line. So if I were changing that, from 209 to say 200, so is expected first track crack, you put that in manually yourself? Absolutely, yep, it's completely uh, a manual thing. Um, so now that I've set expected first crack back to 200, it's put the yellow line way back there at where the profile hits 200 degrees and then it's calculated what the development time ratio will be off all of that. However, expected first crack is only a guess, obviously. Um, so if we look at a log, such as that one we just had open, you can see in the log, there's a thing called actual first crack. Now, actual first crack, there's also something I can type in because I might not have got it right when I was actually operating the roaster. Or I might have not even entered it into the roaster, I might have just noted on a bit of paper or even made a mental note. If I was doing the dishes while it was roasting and I heard it first crack, I might have made a mental note. 
um, so I can come back and make a change to um, logged first crack. But that is, of course, different from expected first crack. Expected first crack here was at 209 degrees and then it was logged at 210 degrees. So it was logged close to, but not exactly, the expected. And so when it's logged, it appears as a little triangle on the log. Whereas when it's expected, it appears as a vertical line on the profile. And both of those things you're free to edit when you're working on a log. When you're working on a profile, you can only edit the expected. However, so it's worth you, feeding actual first crack in if you've done it a few times. Oh, sorry, say again. Is it worth editing the profile if you've done a roast a few times and you've found it's always 210? Is it worth putting that in for your profile? Um, Essentially, when you put it in the profile, it, it goes on the profile as a matter of record, but doesn't make any difference to the roast control algorithm. So the roaster doesn't care whether you've got an expected first crack or not. Uh, it's only a useful thing for you um, in profile development, or if you're sending a profile out to somebody else that's got an expected first track, and I think it's useful for them. Um, so it really comes down to what's the purpose of, um, uh, if you're developing a profile, really what's the purpose you're developing it for, whether you get any benefit or not from putting in expected first track. It will not change the way the rest of the behaves. Um, so if I have a log and I ask to extract the profile from the log because I want to work on that profile, then I do get this dialog which gives me the option of taking what was log and bringing it across as expected into the profile. So if I do that and extract, then I now have got the 210.9. Log value has come in as expected value. Uh, so I've got the option of bringing it in at that stage or, or not, because I might think that the expected value is, is better than the, um, than the logged value. Okay, well, I hope that's not um, confusing anybody. Are there any further questions about that? So you're saying that if we actually mark first crack whilst we're doing a roast live, it doesn't affect the length of the roast at all? Because I thought the countdown started um, and then depending on the level you've chosen, decides when it ends and it was to do with first crack? Um, yeah, not really. Um, the, in the cafe logic, the roast will always end when it hits the red square and if the user has altered the level then effectively they've altered the position of the red square so if the user changes that down to 1.0 then that's where the roast will end automatically if the user enters first crack, it does change to a countdown screen, but it's still going to end at the same point. It hasn't changed the end calculation in any way. I totally misunderstood that. Yeah. But what it does mean is, say for example, you want to end the roast manually, 
So when you're kicking the roast off, you might kick it off, you might turn it up to four. Now you are going to end it off the countdown. So when it comes to first crack, you enter that in into the machine and it starts the countdown. Then when it gets to the desired development time ratio that you want, you will have to end it manually at that point. So that's what I've been doing recently because I've been going for high development time. So maybe that's where my confusions happened because I am manually stopping it at 28, 29. Percent. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you didn't manually stop it, it would still stop at whatever level it is set when it gets there. Um, so the countdown is really a guide for manually ending a roast early and is not used by the machine itself to determine the roast end. Okay, yeah, understand. Yeah. And that's because we can we can set the machine to end by level, we can't set it to end by development time ratio. So if we want to end by development time ratio, we have to do that manually. However, that said, having ended it manually, it remembers where you ended it at. And so if you have ended it manually at a certain development time ratio and then put the same beans in and run it again, it'll end at the same point. So to that extent, it is learning. It's pretty basic machine learning, but it is. <laughs> Just a type of machine learning. All right. Uh, well, those are the topics that I wanted to cover today. Um, if there are any more questions, I'll take them in the last five minutes. Otherwise, uh, we'll call it a wrap. That was, that was really good. Thanks, Chris. Um, so you'll get into all the other tweaks and bits and pieces over the rest of the week, will you? Um, well, let me just... Double check on our um, today. I've covered dragging and smoothing points, entering point positions as types and numbers, and the difference between actual and expected event times. And what I'm going to do on Wednesday is I'm going to look at the whole workflow of developing a profile. And there are two main ways one is iterative versions of profile, and the other one is using working off logs and going extract to edit. So you go log, extract, log, extract, log, extract. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll go over that on Wednesday. Okay, great. Okay. Oh, well, look, thanks everyone for joining us this morning. And I have recorded this, so I'll be posting it up on the um, forum page. A link to the video. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Cool. And we should have Wayne back on Wednesday. He's he's off. Um, he's not well again today. Okie dokie. Okay. Thank right. you, everybody. Cheers. Thank you. Bye now.